What a uh, crazy uh, last uh, few days it's been for this individual, as now she's taking a break from breaking down film of UT San Antonio, where she will be uh, taking her team to wrap up the regular season as the number one seed and the regular season champions of Conference USA. She's minor head coach Keith Adams. Coach, uh, first off, congratulations on the championship. And uh, I hope that this interview is at least nothing else but just a break from all the film and tape you're breaking down. It's a good thing that you guys called me. I was pretty, uh, I was pretty locked in and lost track of time. I've been uh, watching film on San Antonio today and and uh, just getting focused and getting ready for us to continue the payback tour. We got to head down there uh, Wednesday. Well, you're going Wednesday. We'll have the game Thursday night. Uh, excited about that one. I haven't made this announcement on the air yet, but uh, joining me for Thursday night's uh, broadcast will be a member of the 1966 championship team, Neville the Shadow Shed, who lives in San Antonio, has been kind enough to agree to call the uh, game with me, and uh, that is going to be an absolute thrill. Cannot wait to uh, have uh, the Shadow out there to watch you play and, uh, and be there in the broadcast area with us. I think that's great. Uh, that excites me. You know, when we uh, when we traveled back from uh, Western Kentucky, uh, our team we came in uh, on Sunday, and uh, he was at the airport, and they were on their way home from the uh, great weekend that we had that weekend uh, in remembering the '66 team. And so I had to get had a really nice visit with him and his wife at the airport as they were on their way out and we were coming our way in because we'd been on the road that weekend. Uh, love him. I think it'll be great. Um, I'm really thrilled about it. It's uh, going to be an honor to have him do that. I agree with you, and we're excited about that too. Now, back to the Payback Tour for a minute. Will the Payback Tour continue into Birmingham next week? It doesn't just end with San Antonio on the road, right? This this is going to go all the way through into the CUSA tournament. Well, you know, uh, here's the interesting thing. Uh, you know, we, we go down to San Antonio this week, and, and we lost to them uh, last year at their place, 72-59. to 59. Um, it, was a, it was a rough day there last year, and, and, uh, and they beat us. Um, you know, I think the ironic thing, uh, we're going to Birmingham, and guess, guess what? We, uh, we ended our season last year. Where at, Steve? Birmingham. That's so, right. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely on the payback tour still. It's... Uh, it, uh, it it starts uh, this week, you know, with San Antonio because uh, we lost to them both times last year, and, and they thumped us at their place. So um, I'm back to being ticked off again because I'm remembering <laughs> I'm remembering what happened last year. And you know, when you talk about Birmingham, uh, I remember my conversation with my team in the locker room uh, when we lost that day. So we're definitely on the payback tour. Well, well, Coach, I don't want you to be angry anymore. I want you to be happy. I want you to think back about what happened on Saturday. And first of all, congratulations on being the Conference USA champions. But can 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 you explain your emotions of how crazy it was the the end of the regular uh, before it went to overtime? That crazy event. You guys were down by two. Now all of a sudden, you get the steal, get the fall, two free throws, overtime. Wasn't that insane? Could you pr- it, even predict it was, that? Uh, yeah, it was quite a. Um well, you know, it, it really that saying there, it's never over until it's over. Um, you know, you have to really focus and finish games out because so many things can happen. And you have to always have faith that, you know, uh, that next possession, that next play. And um, and what was amazing was we literally, we talked about it in the timeout. Uh, we, we clearly went over what we wanted to do. We wanted to full court man press. I told him I wanted to to go for the steal and and said, hey, from the baseline to the top of the key, let's go for the steal. But once the ball passes the top of the key and starts getting near half court, we're going to have to foul in the middle of the court. But from the baseline to the top of the key, let's try to get a steal and not foul there. And uh, and ironically, I mean, Denzel, he made the uh, – yeah, you know, I I've thought I've thought about this in all my years here at UTEP. Uh, you know, that might be the one single defensive play that that really stands out in the history of this program that was monumental, that was huge. I mean, that was without that play, who knows what would have happened. Uh they 
they would have had a foul and free throws and and who knows what the score would have been if it would have been a one possession or two possession game but that might be the top defensive play in the history of the program that that I can think of. Uh, uh, it was unbelievable. It was a great, great steal, and uh, and then she hit the clutch free throw, so it was a big-time play. And then the game goes into one and later two overtimes. The first overtime was a little strange, wasn't it? Only eight points scored between the two teams combined. Yeah, you know, I think both teams were kind of gassed. I mean, uh, it had been a, it's such a hard-fought, emotional game, and, uh, you know, we... Uh, we tried to sub a little bit in the overtime because I think we were, you know, sometimes you can you can put a fresh body in there that might give you something that a gas body won't. Uh, of course, Nash didn't come out much that day. She she played 47 minutes out of the 50 minutes, and uh, uh, because she was in such a zone, but uh, it, it was a little bit. I think it was a little bit of a get our breath, and and they were gassed too because it had been such a hard fought game. Well, the second overtime is when things really uh, started to uh, at least separate from the two of you. And Lulu McKinney, of all uh, ple- uh, people, was really somebody that had a couple of uh, big, big three-point shots that uh, helped uh, stretch that lead and, and gave you the cushion you need to try to wrap it up. Yeah, Lulu had a couple of big ones. And, uh, you know, uh, it, the game just was uh, so intense. And, and, and I'll tell you what, Charlotte's very talented and, They've got a great point guard that uh, just plays extremely smart. And, you know, we got up and Denzel gambled and went for a steal and didn't get it in the full court and they come down. So we were not matched up like we needed to be out of transition. And they swung the ball and point guard gets in the deep corner, hits a three. And, I mean, there was just plays that went back and forth that uh, it really was an unbelievable matchup between two great teams. Well, Keith Adams with us right now on our Village Inn Hotline as Sports Talk continues. When the game was all over and you could finally breathe a sigh of relief, you had the opportunity to celebrate with your team. I've seen some incredible pictures of the confetti, of the uh, players cutting down the nets, and you said something earlier that I think is very important, that you're down by two in regulation, Charlotte has the basketball, but this team just refused to lose. That's the best way to describe it, and it's kind of the best way to describe this season, isn't it? Uh, a group of young ladies that have been committed from the very beginning, and, and they give you everything they have every time out. It is. They've uh, showed a lot of heart, and I think defense has been their signature. And, you know, Jenzel just told me that, she just knew that she just had she had to get the ball. She just knew she had to get the ball, and uh, you know that was her mindset. And 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 she went and did it. She just went and literally got the ball. And uh, they've showed a lot of fight, and they've been a really fun bunch to coach. I've been uh, really proud of them. And you know, and I told them for Saturday's game before, you know, uh, if they get the win, that I was going to let them cut down the nets because that team. It's done something that no other team of mine has done, and that is protect the home court. We didn't lose a game the entire year on our home court. So I really felt like uh, they had earned that, um, and I gave that to them as motivation, and uh, and they got it done. And so athletic department did a great job of – I didn't know about the confetti. I had no idea that that was going to happen. So uh, the marketing department and the athletic department had that in place, and I, I was unaware of that. And uh, it made for an unbelievable moment for our players. And just really happy for our seniors. And, and it was a great, uh, great atmosphere. And uh, I think the fans, everyone just really had an unbelievable, uh, great time with it. Is that the first time that your mom, Sue, has ever gotten up on a ladder to cut down a net? You know, it is. Uh, and, you know, it's funny, you ask that uh, Sunday, on Sunday we had lunch and, and she, uh, she played ball, and uh, and she said, you know, I never, ever got to cut down the nets in my career throughout my life. And, and so, you know, it was really neat that uh, that we had that moment and that she was able to do that. And so it was a big check, one off the bucket list, and, uh, and, uh, and, and she was really honored and felt great about doing it. I... I grabbed Jerrica Hughes and I said, Jerrica, go get my mom. And Jerrica went up the stands and got her and brought her down. And and uh, and I wanted for her to be the one to take it down. So it was my way of 
just showing my respect to my mom and how much I appreciate her and everything she's done for me. And the kids on the team call her Mama Adams, and it was uh, it was just a great way to finish the day out. And as great as the moment's been, and, and now it's uh, what you're, we're, we're just about forty eight hours uh, later from that from that win, almost to the minute. Um, you have to now turn it around, and this is going to be tough for you because you know that as high as that team has been on Saturday, you've got to find a way to get them right back down to business again, and realize that they have Thursday and then uh, you know three games potentially next week to do this all over again and do it in Birmingham. Well, you know, I think the thing that um, uh, I, 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 in my mind, I know what I'm going to do. I, you know, now we're at a point where this is this is now about the NCAA tournament, and uh, you know, we're going to talk about that tomorrow before we even start any about any any film. Uh, we're going to talk about where we're at now in in this season, and now it's about the tournament. And uh, trust me, Steve, when we get into practice uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to sink my teeth in them and, uh, it will be in a very intense practice tomorrow. And, and if you came to practice, uh, you would have thought we lost. And that's, that's going to be my approach to, uh, get them back down to earth. And definitely I'll get their focus tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, hopefully Wednesday when they walk in the door, they'll bring a focus from the jump, but I know tomorrow I'll have to get their focus and I'm prepared for that. I might need to make a, an appearance tomorrow and, and see this. I might uh, look forward to watching practice <laughs> well, tomorrow. Well, you know, it, here's the thing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do before our practice. I'm going to watch our game from last year. And I've been doing this all year. I watch our game from last year, and then I get ticked off, and then I just stay in that mode. So, <laughs> you know, the game that I'm going to watch is going to be at UTSA last year where they beat us 72-59, to 59, and I'm going to be pissed off about it. And, and then, and then that will be what will then set the tone for the rest of the day. And, uh, you know, and I've been that way. You know, when I came back from Florida, we had practice. And afterwards, Eva said, Coach, if we would have watched practice, I would have thought we lost both games in practice. And uh, so, you know, I'm just uh, I'm going to have a certain mindset that uh, hopefully we'll rub off on our players. Uh, but I'll be fired up and, and it does tick me off. I, you know, I think about the games where people just dominate and kicked our butts last year, and I do get very irritated thinking about it. I've not forgot about it, and and I definitely know that uh, the San Antonio game, um, you know, seventy-two to fifty-nine. Here we go again. So, um, yeah, you know, we had our weekend, but that's over, and now we're getting ready to go play somebody that that beat us and dominated us at their place last year. For people that don't know, you had a conversation about, I would say now eight years ago, with a, a former Hall of Fame coach who coached yeah. here for 38 years and kind of put you in that right mindset a long time ago and kind of made you look at things a little differently. Yeah, Coach Askins did. I, I, you know, we were 120-some games, and we were on a heck of a run with the 2008 team, and we were doing that radio show that night with him, and... Uh, you know, he, he looked at me and he says, well, you know, don't get too happy and don't let him be too happy. And he kept about talking about not being too happy. And I remember after that, I you know went around for about two weeks just being an old grump and being a bear. And, and uh, so trust me, I, I know tomorrow I've got to – and we're going to run tomorrow. We got out-rebounded. And, uh, so, you know, I'm going to bring him back down to earth real quick and uh, – and we'll uh, we'll get back at it. No no question. I look forward to seeing you uh, Thursday in San Antonio. It's going to be a fun game to call. And in the meantime, congratulations again on Saturday on the regular season championship, and now on to the uh, the next uh, the next phase of this basketball season. Well, thanks, Steve. And payback tour continues. And uh, you know, all I know is San Antonio beat us seventy two to fifty nine. So we need to get on the plane, go down there, and play some ball. Keith, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, thanks, Steve. Coach uh, Keith Adams uh, with us here on our Village Inn Hotline.